Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. We've got a fun one for you today. If I roll down a little bit, we've got this great big pulsing button there and that's going to get people's attention really quickly. And when we hover over it, it's going to stop. When you click on it, it's going to take them somewhere. Obviously, you can take them wherever you want to take them. Really easy to do. Got to do a tiny bit of coding for this today, but don't let that put you off. Any code I write, I'll put down below the video. And you're welcome to copy, paste it, use it as you will. Let's enable a visual builder. And if we roll on down there, just to show you, this is totally responsive. If I hit the little purple button, we can look at it on tablet view. And on mobile view. Works perfectly. Okay, well, let's get started. I've got a section here. Inside this section, I've got two rows. I should say a row with two columns. Let's delete this row and we'll start from scratch. And we'll add a new row. I'm going to put two columns in mine. Use whatever you need for yours, obviously. For our left-hand column, the actual button itself, we're going to use a blurb module. We've been using a lot of the blurb module lately, but it's a really useful little module. Okay. For my title, I'm just going to put more info. Entirely up to you. I'm not going to have any content. You can vaguely see it there. I'll make it so you can see it in just a moment. I'm going to delete your content there, so I've just got more info. I don't want an image. I'm going to use an icon for mine today. So I'm going to switch the little icon button to on or yes. And let's perhaps have a question mark. And that's there. Like I say, it's a little bit vague in the background. Let's give this a background so you can see. Give it whatever background color you want. Stick to colors though. I wouldn't do gradients and that because we're going to use a bit of code to change the background color in a minute. So stick to a straight color. I'm going to make my red. You can see that a little bit better now. Just above the background there, we've got a link wherever you want to link it to. I think I've got a section down here that's called section three. This may be it here. So I'm going to link mine to that one. You can have separate links for the title, which is the more info bit. And the whole module, I'm just going to use the whole module. I'm going to link it to that section down below. Hashtags, I think it's called sec three, section three. But obviously you can link wherever you want. Always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off-site, open it in a new tab. That way your site's going to stay open. Great, well, let's roll this back up a bit. We'll go over to our design. Image and icon. I'm going to make my icon white. Keep this fairly simple. I'm leaving it the size, that, the default size. If you want to resize it, you can do so right down here. But I'm going to leave mine white there. Let's go down to the heading text here. I'm going to make that white also. And I'm going to pop it in the middle just like that. Great. I want to give this a bit of height. Basically, I want to turn this into a square. Because once it's a square, we can turn it into a circle. To make a circle, you want to start off with a perfect square. So let's make this into a square. Still in design. Let's close up the title text there. I want to go down to sizing. I'm going to give it a height of 300. I'm also going to give it a max height of 300. I don't want it getting any bigger than that because it'll destroy the circle on larger devices. I'm going to do the same for the width. 300. If we don't want percentage, I want a pixel value. So where it says percent there, I'm going to put PX for pixels. It already put pixels in for us down below. I'm just going to copy that, control C and paste it in the max width down below. Or you can just type it in again if you want to. Great. Well, believe it or not, that's a square. So we can turn that into a circle. But I want to push the content down more centrally there. So we're going to do that with spacing. Let's go down to spacing here and padding. Let's perhaps, we'll try 100. Kind of want that circle to be fairly central that doesn't look too bad actually once it's down there we can readjust it if we need to let's make this round now to do that i'm just going to roll down to border just below rounded corners 
I'm going to put 50% up there. 50 and the percent sign. We've now got a completely round blurb module. But we also want to make sure this stays in the middle of our column on all devices, so it's central. To do that, I'll just go back up to the sizing. I could have done this in sizing initially. Module alignment, I want to make sure it's in the middle of the column that it's sitting in. That way, on tablet and mobile, it'll still be central. Great. Well, we've got our little button there that works. And it's got a little link that's going to take us down to a section down below there. So let's animate this thing. What I want it to do is grow and shrink. I want it to sort of pulse in and out, almost like a heart beating. So we're going to write a bit of code to do that today. So I'm going to give this module a class. To give it a class, we need to go over to the advanced CSS IDs and classes. Make sure you go to class, not ID. And I'm going to perhaps give this a class of pulsing. So now it's got a class name. We can target it with some CSS code. Let's add a code module. And don't forget, I'll put all this code down below as usual. You can find it down below in the video description there. Move this a little bit closer. Okay, we're going to be using a bit of CSS, so I need to put some style tags in. And this is the only bit I can't put down below because of the pointy brackets. And style tags are really easy. If you're using a code module like I am today, you'll need them. If you're putting this code in the additional CSS or custom CSS panels, you do not need these style tags. But a style tag is left pointy bracket, the word style, and right pointy bracket, really difficult. Once you put in the right one, it'll put the closing style tag in, and you can put any CSS in between these two style tags. Okay, well we give it a class name of pulsing, so all class names have a dot or a period, and then the the name. Then we could open and close some curly brackets here and tell it what we want it to do. Well, I want to create an animation for it. So I'm going to say animation, which we'll create in a moment. We'll give that animation a name. So we'll say colon. I'm going to give mine, say, pulse. We're going to be using keyframes to build this today. So I'm going to use pulse K because I can't use the same thing as our class name up there. I want it to last five seconds, the actual animation. I want it to keep going once it's completed its cycle. So I'm going to say infinite. And I want it to be consistent. So I'm going to say linear. So it does it all at the same rate. I'm going to put a little semicolon on the end of there. Great. Now we need to actually create this animation that we call Pulse K there. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to drop down from this first curly bracket here. Like I said earlier, we're using keyframes for this. So I'm going to say at keyframes. Then that name, Pulse K. And we know we can close some more curly brackets. Or we can create the animation itself. So 0%, 0 and the percent sign. Let's open some more curly brackets here. I want it to basically start pulsing. So I'm going to use transform scale to make it grow. And once it's grown, I want to add a little box shadow on the bottom to make it stand out a little bit more. And then halfway through the cycle, we're going to turn it blue. So I'm going to use transform, colon, scale, S-C-A-L-E, no gap, and some round brackets at the end. Initially, I wanted to start off at regular size, which is one, one equals 100%. We'll put a little semicolon on the back there. I don't want it to change color at the beginning. 0% is second one of our five seconds, or basically when the page loads. I don't want it to have any box shadow initially, so I'm going to say box shadow, none. Great, well now I can copy this a couple of times. I'm going to select from the 0% to the first closing bracket there, not the second one. The second one's encapsulating all of our keyframes there, so we don't want that, just the first one. I'm going to hit Control c to copy, I'm going to drop down, hit Control v to paste. I'm going to do that one more time. Second one, I'm going to make 50%. Third one, I'm going to make 100%. 100% being second 5 of our 5 seconds. 50% being second 2.5. Okay, halfway through, I'm going to have it transform in scale to 1.1. 1.1 would be 10% bigger. 110% basically. And box shadow, I want some box shadow when it gets to the halfway through. 
So I'm going to change the none. I'm going to make my box shadow perhaps zero picks left and right. 10 picks downwards and give it a spread of 20 pixels. And I'll give it an RGBA color. You can give it hex color, whatever you like. I'm going to use RGBA for mine today. I wanted a fairly dark gray. So I'm going to make it zero by zero by zero by 0 0.9, which should be pretty dark gray. Zero point nine. That's great. And also halfway through, I want to turn the background to blue. So I'm going to add another line just after this box shadow. I'm going to say background. Blue. And as you can see, that's actually started. Now, the reason that it's not transforming in scale and pulsing is because I spelled it wrong. <laughs> I've forgotten the M on transform there. If you don't spell things right, things won't work. So I'm just sticking an M on the end of all the transforms there. I was looking at it, wondering why it hadn't started already. Now we've got it. Now it's starting to transform. As you can see, it's sort of pulsing in and out, changing color, growing. But when they hover over it, I want it to stop so they can either read the writing and click on it if they want to. So I'm going to copy this class thing up the top there, pulsing. Don't forget all this code's down below for anybody that wants to copy and paste it. I'm going to say pulsing just at the end on the G. I'm going to put a colon with no gap and then no gap again in the word hover. And I'm going to say animation none. That way, when they hover over it, it's going to stop. It's going to go back to its original state. And when they take the mouse off, it'll start again. Great. Well, if we've done everything correctly there, we've got our link, we've got our class name, we've got our code. And like I say, this piece of code from the dot, so the closing curly bracket, if you're using your custom CSS panel or additional CSS panel is all you need without the style tags. If you're going to use a code module, if you're just using on this page would be a good example of using a code module, then you're going to need to put these style tags in. Like I said earlier, I can't put those down below, but it's very easy. Great. Let's check this on the front end, make sure it's going to work. I'm going to save my changes. I hit the little purple button, save or publish. Let's exit the visual builder and see what we've got. Let's roll on down, and there's our little button. Well, quite a big button, actually. As you can see, it's pulsing away over five seconds and changing color. When I hover over it, it's going to stop. I'm going to click on it. should take us to that section down below there. There we go. Really nice little feature to have on your site. If you want to get some of these attention, that's going to do it pretty quickly. You're not going to miss that with your eyeballs once you look at a website. And like I say, it's fully responsive. So it'll work on all devices for you. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a pulsing button using a blurb module. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Day.